Welcome everyone. This is Carla McAuliffe here. I'm the Executive Director of the National Earth Science Teachers Association, NESTA, and together with the National Association of Geoscience Teachers, NAGT, we are pleased to bring you this webinar today. Uh, we have just a few housekeeping tips before I introduce our speaker. Uh, hopefully you have used Zoom before. If not, it's a fairly simple interface. Uh, we do ask that everyone mute themselves and not display the video. Uh, by muting yourself, that'll help make our audio quality a lot better. Um, we will be using the chat box a fair amount, uh, so please make sure that you do open up the chat box. And if you want to communicate with us non-verbally, uh, you can click on the participants box and um, raise your hand, answer yes or no to a question, give us feedback if we're going too fast or too slow. So once again, we're eager for you all to be here. And I would like to introduce um, our facilitator today. Dr. Ann Iger is currently the Associate Press Professor of Geological Sciences and Science Education at Central Washington University, where she's also served as the Director of the Office of Undergraduate Research. Anne has served as President of the National Association for Geoscience Teachers, as well as Chair of the Association's Professional Development Committee. Anne is very committed to improving earth science literacy and science education, has extensive involvement in curriculum materials development for teachers, and is keenly interested in integrating the process of science into teaching. Recently, Anne was selected as the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Geoscience Education. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Anne to, um, to, to start our webinar <laughs> on facilitating three-dimensional learning with curriculum materials from Integrate. Thanks, Carla. So this is Anne. Um, I put up a little picture of myself so you can have a face to put with a name. Um, and I'm really, really happy to do this. Um, uh, this is... Um, this webinar is based on some work I uh, did with many, many others last summer. Carla was one of those, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that um, and about the Integrate Materials. But just to give you a little practice first, um, I want everyone to, to say hi. Go to your participant uh, page there and, and, and raise your hand so that I can, or clap, so that we can see that there we go, there's some hands going up. Somebody said yes, that's good. <laughs> Just so you know where you are. Okay, we've got some yeses. Great, so um, if you haven't found it yet, put a note in the chat. But if you have found it, okay. Dieta says hello, great. Uh, so go ahead and put your hands down and I will go ahead and get started. Um, we are, uh, this will be interactive. So please, if you have questions or comments as we're going along, please feel free to type those in the chat. And then there will also be times when you have um, the opportunity to explore some things and, and we'll ask you to put things in the chat um, as a group and then we'll kind of address them all together. Okay, so um, what are, oh, sorry, I keep, there we go. Our goals for today, um, by the end of our webinar, you'll have learned a little bit about the Integrate Materials Development Rubric and how it aligns with the framework for K-12 Science Education and GSS. Um, so right there, I know when you registered for this workshop, you answered two questions about your familiarity, one with the NGSS and one with Integrate. And most of you are more familiar with the NGSS than with Integrate. So hopefully um, by the end of this, you'll have, th those will be a little bit more equal. But it's great to know that you are um, mostly quite comfortable with the NGSS and, and the framework. So um, you'll learn a little bit more about the alignment between those two things. You'll have a chance to explore the Integrate materials using an NGSS driven search and browse functionality that I'll um, talk a little bit about. And then you'll have the chance to think about how to adapt these materials to your personal setting to facilitate three-dimensional learning. And we'll tell you about some opportunities for um, moving forward with that in the future. 
So um, given those things, we want to start with one of these uh, chat conversations right now. So, so think about the materials you're currently using in your teaching, and, and particularly in earth and space science. Think about those in light of the framework and standards based on it, like the NGSS, but your state might have adopted other standards in light of the framework. So where, where are your materials currently strongest? And where are the biggest gaps in terms of, of the framework and the three-dimensional learning in the NGSS? So take a minute to think about that and, and type your thoughts on that in the chat. I'll give you a few minutes just to think and, and write. If any of you are not um, currently teaching, or if you're um, at an organization um, that develops materials, you can also think about this question in terms of what you are familiar with, or what are you, what you developed, what you have developed, and where they're strongest, where they're weakest. Space science is weakest in terms of three D learning. Okay. Any other thoughts? Take another 30 seconds here and uh, take any other thoughts. Okay, human impact, hardest to find age appropriate. Non-traditional adult learning, okay, great. So I didn't actually um, make this part of this webinar, but I'll come back to the human impact here in a second. Natural resources and human impact easiest. I guess I'm the opposite of Margaret. So yeah, um, I, it, there is um, a fair amount of variable variability state to state, I think, and certainly district to district in the curriculum materials that people are using. Earth Labs project from Turk that's 3D aligned. Great, um, from Carla. Um, any of you in New York State can raise your hand if you are. Okay, nobody's from New York. Um, uh, my students and I did an analysis of the materials in the New York State Regents exam in Earth Science and also found big gaps in the human impacts and um, uh, natural hazards categories, uh, believe it or not. So I think. There is some variability. There might be strong content, but not necessarily the three-dimensional learning. There might be um, uh, regional differences. So we know that not everything out there is is well um, aligned, or uh, you know that there are a lot of changes that we need to make, um, especially for places that have adopted the frame standards based on the framework. So I'm going to give you introduce you to uh, one. Um, uh, project and my um, and the, these are through integrate so integrate is a, um, a funded project by the National Science Foundation it's in its seventh year right now and we've um, developed curricular materials that address the grand challenges that society is facing um, use science and engineering practices with a particular highlight on geoscientific thinking and um, I'll tell you a little bit more about what that means um, makes use of the curricular materials, make use of real world data and issues, um, develop student systems thinking, make use of evidence based practices in teaching and learning, so the, the best research that we know, and are adaptable and adoptable by instructors in a variety of settings. So it's a whole other talk to tell you about how we did that curricular development. And there's lots that you can find on the website about it. So I don't want to dwell on that here. Um, but I will tell you that that all sounds pretty um, uh, 
pretty highfalutin, lots of stuff in there, pretty hard to do. And it is, um, but we ensured that we met those goals by uh, encoding them in a 28 item rubric that the materials had to pass in order to be tested and published. So this all um, integrate started and the curricular and the rubric were developed prior to the publication of the framework and the next generation science standards. But both things, all three things are based on the same um, foundational documents. And in earth and space science, that includes the literacy documents or science uh, literacy, ocean literacy, atmospheric literacy and climate literacy. So, so the content is based on um, some of the same, the disciplinary core ideas are based on the same content that we've been looking at and integrate. And also this, uh, the idea of looking at data, using evidence-based practices, using the science and engineering practices are all embedded in the curricular materials that um, integrate has developed as well. So um, here's a, an example of the, when you go to look at the integrate teaching materials, this is the main page. Um, they're all on here, everything that has passed that rubric. And you're going to have a chance to look at these in a sec second. So I just want to give you the briefest overview here of what we have. And then um, here's an example of the front page of one of those many modules. And you can see that there's uh, um, uh, graphics at the top that highlight um, the, the level that it's at, how long the unit is, the authors here and where they are coming from. There's a table of contents um, with each unit outlined in some of the strengths of the module. So I'm going to say now that this, these were developed at the undergraduate level. This was um, you know, initially designed as funded through the Division of Undergraduate Education. Um, but as many of you probably know, especially in earth and space science, there's a whole lot of overlap between, uh, especially the introductory level and, um, the high introductory undergraduate level and the high school level. So we've already seen a lot of adaptation and use of these materials in the high school. And what we wanted to do, um, given that they were, um, uh, based on the same ideas and documents and evidence as the framework and next generation science standards is make those connections explicit and help teachers see the connections and how to adapt them for their own classroom. So that's where um, this next part comes from. So if you're looking at this and thinking all those people are at colleges, yes, that's true. They are, <laughs> but um, they're, these are uh, accessible for um, especially high school and some middle school as well. So how does this work in, in, um, with the next generation science standards? And of course you are here, you're all familiar with the, the concept of three-dimensional learning, that disciplinary core ideas, un, um, understanding about phenomena and disciplinary core ideas is built through engaging in science and engineering practices and connecting ideas to cross-cutting concepts. And that's what we consider three-dimensional learning. So within Integrate, um, we have 186 of these individual activity pages. And over um, the summer, last summer, um, summer of 2017, got together a group of about 12 experienced educators to look at each one of those individual activity pages and tag them with practices, core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. So, Again, to be clear, these weren't developed directly to align with the NGSS, but the nature of the rubric that they had to pass meant that that alignment was already there. And um, that's, that's what we found is that there was uh, each page drew from all three of those uh, components, all three dimensions of learning. And in some cases, um, the performance expectations as well. But Again, as you're probably aware, um, the performance expectations are, are much more specific and didn't always match exactly with what, um, uh, with the materials that we had developed. So um, we have, in addition to um, the tagging, we developed a, a suite of resource pages that support you in searching through the materials and understanding these connections that I, that I just talked about. So, um, here's our, our page on integrate in the next generation science standards and a little bit about navigating the materials with the NGSS in mind. 
Um, you can see on the left-hand navigation there, there's more about the overall alignment, how we did it, um, and then this search and browse, which I'm gonna show you next, and you're gonna eventually go to and, and have some time to play around in. Um, when you go to that page, um, there's a little bit of information at the top about how to find what you want using the search tool. And this is just a screenshot, so I can't click on any of these, but you can see that there's um, the, the um, cross-cutting concepts, SEPs, DCIs labeled here on the right, and you can kind of drill down by level in that case. Um, I know you're probably thinking, how come they, oops, how come they use those silly colors rather than the real colors for the NGSS? And that's just a programming thing that I, uh, I couldn't avoid, but <laughs> that's why they are there. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna show, before I let you go look at this yourself, I want to show you um, the big picture. All of these 186 activity pages, how well do they line up with the DCIs, um, the cross-cutting concepts, and the science and engineering practices. So let's look at the DCIs first. So these are the, the big ideas in earth and space science. So I'm sorry, space science people who are looking at gaps there. Um, that was not the main focus of our work, so um, we don't have a lot in that area, although there are a couple. Um, we've got a, a lot. So the numbers across the top are the number of individual activities. And then each bar represents um, within that disciplinary core idea. So, of course, there are lots of things underneath those big ideas. And th these, again, are the ones that are most common within that. So Earth systems being dynamic and interacting cause feedback effects that can increase or decrease the original change. It's, um, the most common one within uh, this biggest bar here at ESS2A. Within natural resources, which is another um, uh, big piece of the work here, all forms of energy production and other resource extraction have associated economic, social, environmental, geopolitical costs and risks, as well as benefits. So this gets at some of the um, two of the really fundamental ideas within the integrate materials. And one is the systems thinking that all the materials had to engage students in systems thinking. And second, natural resources um, idea there is that all of these materials had to engage students in addressing interdisciplinary problems. So that's, that particular DCI is an excellent example of um, the, the breadth of interdisciplinary, interdis, interdisciplinarity in the materials. And finally, um, human impacts on earth systems. That was another um, uh, big bar here and uh, sustainability of human societies uh, requires responsible management of natural resources. So again, we're talking about um, grand challenges within society was another requirement of the materials and the interdisciplinary problems. I didn't point out the roles of water and earth systems, although that was also, um, that, that was the second largest group there. Um, many, um, because they were, they were more spread out amongst all of the ideas, but there's lots of materials on freshwater and um, uh, water processes on our surface. Uh, here's the science and engineering practices and the distribution of those amongst the, the 186 pages. Um, I, should, I should have mentioned on the previous slide and this one, uh, many of these are tagged with more than one. So if you added up all these numbers together, you'll get more than the total number of pages. But you can see obviously that developing and using models is very common. And those are most often used to um, illustrate or predict relationships between a system or components of a system. And then analyze and interpreting data. And this was is one of the, um, uh, guiding principles of, the, of integrate. So it was, these are really embedded throughout the materials. And most commonly, we're asking students to construct, analyze, and interpret graphical displays of data and use graphical displays of data, such as maps, charts, and graphs. So these um, also are both, especially the graphical displays, maps, charts, graphs is where the geoscientific thinking really comes in. Um, we have got a lot of map-based data use. 
I will point out um, that some of the things that aren't as strong, asking questions and defining problems, planning and carrying out investigations, and say this, these are areas where um, we were quite um, strict in our interpretation of these, in that the, within the um, next generation science standards, those apply to when students are asking questions and defining problems, and when are students planning and carrying out investigations. And I would say many of our materials um, start with a question, but it's not necessarily posed by the students or developed by the students. So, so those would be areas where adapting them to the high school classroom might involve helping students develop questions that can be investigated using the tools um, that we've provided in the materials. And cross-cutting concepts. Um, again, you can see clearly that patterns, cause and effect, systems and sim system models are the most prominent here. Again, the patterns ties back to the um, use of graphs, charts, and images, and, and maps, um, especially to identify patterns. And the idea that empirical evidence is needed to identify patterns. You need to uh, collect all the data about their, about earthquakes and where they're occurring to identify their patterns and put them or to put them on a map to identify the patterns. Um, cause and effect, um, also uh, a very very common um, uh, component within there, and system models. That was systems thinking was a big part of the materials. So I see um, a question there about, do the activities start with phenomena? So that's a good question. And I think that's um, where you can, we'll see that these were not initially developed with the NGSS in mind. They were developed for the college classroom. However, um, they, that is something that would be easily um, reframed for a middle school or high school teacher and for the students to say, here is the phenomena that we're thinking about. So it's there in all cases, it's just not necessarily highlighted in the way that you might want it to be or that we might want it to be to make it easy for you to use. So we're working on that part, um, but I hope, I hope that answers that question. So I didn't make a similar graph for the performance expectations because there was no, um, that it was a little bit more random and, and not necessarily, you know, you wouldn't have a nice pattern within the, the data there, but there's not all of them specifically address a performance expectation, but all of the pages have one of the three, sorry, one of each of the three <laughs> dimensions. Um, that would allow you to build towards a performance expectation. So um, uh, I'm just going to show a couple more slides here before I let you go um, explore these and then put some comments in the chat and we'll come back together and talk about them. But this is to, to help you navigate. So if you, I'm now inside that climate of change module and you can see uh, this is a particular unit page. So this is the level at which people were tagging these. And you can see this little um, symbol up in the corner. So that is your clue that there's something more there. Uh, you can click on that and um, see what this has been tagged with. And there are some, there's an, a little overview um, and that describes what students are doing. And we hope to also flesh these out more in the future to help you think about, um, and, and actually the idea about putting the phenomenon in there is a, is a great one um, to really uh, make these more easily adaptable for your classroom. So um, a, a quick summary so far, um, the integrate materials are well aligned with the NGSS, even though they weren't they, uh, initially um, envisioned that way. They're now tagged with all the components of the NGSS to facilitate searching and browsing. And they're especially strong in the use of models and data analysis, patterns and systems, um, if those are um, areas where you're seeking more support 
in earth sciences. So that the list on the right there is all the people that were involved in the tagging. They did a huge amount of work and um, I don't uh, ever have enough opportunities to thank them. <laughs> Okay, so here's another um, chance for you to explore a little bit. Mitchell's gonna put that link uh, in the slide in the chat, and that's gonna take you to that first page of Integrate and the NGSS. Um, so we'll take a few minutes now for you to just poke around, um, see what's there. You can get a sense for, and, and you'll have time to look at a particular activity and think about it in your classroom in, in the next um, interactive part of this. Uh, but just now get a sense for what's there um, and enter any comments and questions either from your searching or from what I talked about in the chat and we'll come back and address them. So Mitchell just put the, the link in the chat and you can go to that. And um, yeah, we'll take, it's, uh, we'll take about four or five minutes and feel free to just add things in the chat as you go. Cannot find one lesson plan. What am I doing wrong? Um, if you can see, this is the page that the um, link should have taken you to. You can go to search and browse by NGSS. And anything here, um, you could just click on any one of these or sort of drill down the way I'm doing right now. Um, just randomly choosing something here. Um, and I'm going to look at crops and irrigation patterns. So this may not look like a traditional lesson plan, um, but this is how we've developed what we're calling activity pages. Uh, and um, part of the reason I'm um, interested in getting feedback from you is what kinds of things you would need to uh, make this useful in your context. So um, I'm, I'm, I see lessons are pretty advanced for middle school. Um, would probably use bits and pieces of modules, okay. I would agree. Um, there are, and that was something... Um, that, that was an interesting process for us as we tagged these materials was recognizing when you look in detail at the, the way things are described in the NGSS, um, we were actually, the expectations for the materials were, were sometimes at that middle school level, but you're right, they're framed within a higher level um, problem or issue. And I, I think it, um, there are bits and pieces that'll be useful, but but there are probably fewer than for high school. Just went to integrate site and got lots of ideas and resources. Okay. Um, PDF versions of the student materials do not seem to display images. Is that true or just my browser? Um, Carla, I don't know the answer to that question for sure. Um, uh, it could be that that's the way that the authors wanted it. <laughs> I, I would guess that it's not necessarily your browser, but that it's um, the way they were developed. But I, I'd have to look more carefully at the, the actual module you were looking at. Any other um, comments right now? Okay, well, let me um, go back to slides here for a second um, because do these work? <laughs> what evidence do we have that these have made a difference? And again, I'll remind you that this, these were tested within um, undergraduate classrooms and that one of the things that we were really interested in as um, a team uh, is uh, looking at how students develop their systems thinking skills. So we designed an essay question. Um, well, first we defined what a systems thinker is, can identify a system, might be a natural system, might be a human system or a linked human environment system. 
and understand how that system can be divided into interacting parts and recognize that changes in one part will affect other parts of the system. So we um, developed an essay question around that um, that asked students to give an example of a real world, real world system and describe its parts, explain how the parts interact, use systems thinking concepts in their explanation, and then use an example system and discuss how an effect in one part can be influenced by multiple causal factors. So it's a pretty complex um, essay question here. This was given to all students after they used the integrate materials. And excuse me, we had a rubric for it. So the color coding matches um, the, uh, um, the parts of the essay question, and they kind of roughly match the uh, colors in, in the NGSS. So um, the disciplinary core idea is, is the example of the real world system and its parts, it's more content focused. And then the green pieces are really that cross-cutting concepts. And the blue is um, a little bit more like science and engineering practices, so how the, the cause and effect and how that is um, within happens within the system, or how you would investigate the system. Okay, so here are some results of that. And, and um, I'll explain these two graphs. They look very simple, um, but I'll explain what they are covering. So remember the rubric had four points or possible points. The graph on the top um, is showing students who had that essay at the end of a quarter semester that did not use any of the integrate materials. So they're the control. And the graph on the bottom is students' um, responses to the systems thinking essay at the end of the course or um, uh, at the end of the course that did use integrate materials. So we've got about twice as many um, students in the integrate group as the control, but both courses that these um, are drawing from are, are sort of intro level geoscience courses that fulfill gen ed requirements. So the type of course is the same. Um, they're from different kinds of institutions, um, not just one institution, not two really different kinds of institutions. So the, the sample is about the same. And um, what we're seeing is that these materials really do help students develop systems thinking uh, as we've defined it, but that their scores are higher than the students who haven't been um, taught this way. So yes, thank you, they are great results. Um, we were super excited to see these. Um, I, I will say we have lots of other results that aren't nearly as clear, but these are fantastic. Um, and I, I do see your comment there also, Susan, that your main desire is for data sets that middle schoolers can use to draw conclusions and patterns from. And I think uh, we, um, because the materials are strongly based in data, um, those often are um, things you could mine out of here for your, for your own use because authors often spend a lot of time making those accessible for the classroom. Uh, as I'm sure you know, it's, it's not always easy to just go to the web and pull off a great data set that you can just immediately put into the classroom. So um, I think you'll find um, some of what you need here and, and you could get at that from both the content level or from the data analysis side. Um, for maps and images, NASA Earth Observatory is great if you have access to tech. Agreed, um, they've got fantastic, especially satellite imagery on the EO site. So um, we feel pretty good that these have had an impact, especially on, on systems thinking. And so uh, um, I do wanna give you um, one more chance to now think about those gaps that you had in, and I'm sorry about the space <laughs> science, um, but if someone did want to look there, I recommend looking at Earth's thermostat. That's, that module is one that does talk more about um, um, electromagnetic radiation and energy from the sun. And then think about, we've already got some ideas about what you would need or want to do to adapt this module or activity to your classroom. But, but take a, a minute 
or a few minutes now to either go back to whatever you were looking at or find a particular activity that the, the title or the content um, uh, is somewhere you've been thinking about making changes and then say, what would help me put this in my class? Obviously, you'd need time to go through it, but if there are things right away that would um, support your implementation, um, please put that information in the chat and we'll take uh, about five minutes again um, or, or as much time as you need to, to go through that process. And any other questions you have um, or comments for others, if you want to share resources, other resources or comments too, please put those in the chat. Mitchell's put the link to the browse to get you started. Okay, I see someone's asking how to search by um, uh, science and engineering practices. So I will show so when you get to that link that um, Mitchell sent, which I've got up here, um, over on the right-hand side is this box that says NGSS Science and Engineering Practices. Uh, let's look at high school. If I click on that and you say, I don't know what P1, P2, P3 are. Well, lucky for you, when you hover over that link, um, we, we put the title of those. Let's go to... Uh, Go to developing using models. And again, you don't know what P2.2 is, that's okay. You can hover over this and see the, the window come up on the left there. So you can, you can drill down to it in that way. And now we're just down to this P2.4, develop and or use multiple types of models to provide mechanistic accounts, blah, blah, blah. And you get to um, the few that are, um, that cover, that particular um, science and engineering practice. First atmosphere has a great graph of CO2 data over several decades. Oh, great. Excellent. So then to get rid of um, all those constraints on your search limits, you can just hit that X and get back to the beginning here. Um, Within this, you can also do something like, say, um, a carbon cycle. So now we've got carbon cycle, but I can still use the results on, or the um, boxes on the right to drill down and say, okay, I want to make sure that I am looking at something in. Uh, Let's say analyzing and interpreting data. And um, so you can still, eat, once you've um, defined whatever content area you want in the search, you can then still use the, the NGSS concepts to um, drill down a little bit further. So that's another way to use the site. So Susan, you must be looking at what I, what I suggested to you, perhaps. There's thermostat. Yes, so um, this is the module um, that, that Susan is looking at that does have those few connections to space science in the, in the solar system. You can see it right here in the first one, energy space and the Earth's effective temperature. Um, radiation balance. So, uh, yeah, so this has um, also a lot of connections to energy that have um, and has some, I should have mentioned, um, some of the tags. I didn't even look at the disciplinary core ideas, but the uh, disciplinary core ideas are not just earth science. Um, these include um, physical science, engineering, life sciences. So all of the, the disciplines are covered here. Um, not as extensively, obviously, as the earth and space sciences, since that was the focus of the materials. But there are some really nice um, connections to life sciences, 
um, especially in um, uh, evolution and ecosystems, uh, because um, there's a lot of connections between um, environmental health and um, lead in the environment and soils are, are a big component of what we have. Other um, thoughts or comments that, that people want to add? I'll give you a couple more minutes. looking for oceans as a regulating mechanism of earth. So there is a, a module called ocean sustainability. I'll just type in ocean there. Oh gosh, that gave us all kinds of things. So, um, uh, so this ocean sustainability includes um, ocean circulation, which is um, uh, gonna be part of that regulating mechanism that you're talking about. Um, ocean acidification, but you can get an overview of all of the materials um, from this um, this instructor materials page. And this also collects, or doesn't have all of the tags, but it does um, give you kind of an overview of the materials. So um, there may be, those are the, that's the primary ocean one that I recall, but there's also lots of, um, coastal zone materials. Uh, Carla's asking if they are, oh, um, so yeah, if I go back to that ocean introduction, um, you can see the tags on each of those. Um, so that's, these are at the unit level, not at the entire module level that you will um, see those connections. Okay, great. So um, let me uh, uh, show you a couple more things. Um, Great, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, that this is what you're looking for. Um, in the um, strategies, so we, this page I would say is um, the beginnings of what I envision for these materials, um, which is to say we had a sense um, in the tagging and in putting these materials together is how, how you might use them to make progress towards performance expectations or towards 3D assessments. Um, but we don't have all of that yet because um, it takes people like you, like high school teachers and middle school teachers um, who are using the materials to, to, to give us these strategies for how you would use the materials and how would you, you would use them to address performance expectations and make progress, help students make progress towards assessments. So some of these are um, just about uh, strategies that, that you might think about as you're browsing the materials, you know, what, what kinds of things do you wanna emphasize? Uh, but we also started to make some suggestions for how you might achieve um, a particular performance expectation or help students reach that and with some suggested modifications. So here's, here's an example. Um, the performance expectation is construct an explanation based on evidence. You can read the rest. Um, but how, how um, all these things have influenced human activity. This is a pretty big, big performance expectation, right? I mean, none of these are small, but you recognize that they're, they're um, sort of problems or questions that a student could address. So there's a particular activity that does you know, pre, you know, uh, address this um, PE and it describes that. So, so we've suggested some potential modifications that might help you in your classroom, um, including things like there's a whole piece about unit conversions and calculations and that could be a nice connection to math or quantitative skills. Um, 
There could be some supplementing of the data with um, imagery from Google Earth to help visualize what, what different amounts of precipitation and irrigation look like, um, especially for, for students who um, uh, don't travel much or are, are more um, regionally based. And um, it could be, it already uses data from seven states, but it could easily be all of the data um, is from the USDA and could be um, easily adapted for use in other states. So um, as I said, this is, this is very much at the beginning stages, but we do have a few suggestions here. And my next slide um, is, a, is a call for your input and support. If you're interested in doing more with these materials, um, I'm uh, putting together um, uh, a working group to, to, of people that are interested in doing this, prim primarily 912, but um, middle school too. And, and we'll begin this work at the Earth Educators Rendezvous summer, which I'm going to show you in the next slide. So please feel free to contact me um, directly if you're interested in, in participating in that or having input in how you can use these materials more. So um, I'll leave you with uh, a few upcoming opportunities. These are both from um, Nesta and from NAGT. Um, there are a couple of upcoming webinars that are specifically related to NGSS. Um, Carla, do you want to say anything about those two? Uh, sure. Um, integrating Earth and Space Sciences, that is um, into high school physics and physical science. That's Rebecca Vieira um, from the Association of um, Physics Teachers. and. Carla, we just lost you. Hmm. Well. Okay, I see she muted herself. Maybe she'll come back. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, Mitch will put the link to the Earth Educators Rendezvous <clears throat> in the chat and you can um, check that out. It's happening this summer for a week. And there are um, lots of opportunities there for K-12 teachers as well, and in including this working group. Um, and please, of course, feel free to, to spread the word about these. Carla, are you back? I am. I'm, okay. I guess I just cut out momentarily. Sorry about that. It's all right. <laughs> the April webinar is um, Shelley Olds from UNAVCO and Amy Pallant from the Concord Consortium. And they're going to be sharing uh, earth science related teaching resources that are um, NGSS congruent. Uh, so. Great. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, um, Mitchell, maybe you could put a link to, the, to those, one or both of those webinars, or if they're both on the same page, um, just so people know how to get there. Um, and uh, finally, um, we would love it if you would take a few minutes to evaluate the webinar. We always are looking for feedback and ideas, um, especially um, uh, if this was a useful webinar for you and if we should be doing more things like this or what, what other things we should be doing. So um, I imagine we'll get both those links. Oh, maybe I can put this one in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Mitchell's getting to that too. Uh, any uh, final comments or questions before we sign off? Well, thank you all very much for coming. Hope to um, see you virtually at more webinars in the future and possibly in person at the Earth Educators Rendezvous. And um, good luck to you in your teaching and hope that this was useful for you. Thanks very much.